Greetings, Royal Family. It's time for Love and Hip Hop Miami Season 3 Reunion Part 1. Thanks for clicking on the video. If you're new here, welcome. Returning Royal Family members, you already know how this thing goes. I have a question. So, Real Housewives of Atlanta's reunion had to be postponed, but Miami reunion is in full swing. Make it make sense. Okay, let's just get straight into it. First of all, Claudia Jordan as the host. I don't know how I feel yet. As I'm, I'm watching this right now, so we shall see. She looked nice. I do think, I do wish that she would have either picked the blazer or the pants. It's a lot of glitter going on. It's a lot of color contrast going on. The color scheme is real funky, giving me... 90s cross color vibes but i guess that's the theme that they were going for uh the fashions for me category is brothel on a budget the ratchet rangers really disappointed me with the looks and i have been rooting for them all season and this is what they do to me i was their number one i gave them their name the ratchet rangers now i'm not going to criticize anybody individually on their looks because that's not how I get down. You guys saw the reunion, but I was really not, not feeling it. Okay, so we move on from the fashions, right? We get into, of course, the hottest story of the season, Amara's story, or her telenovela, as I like to call it. So she still has Scam J living in her house, but she says that they aren't in a relationship. This is, this is what she says. Translation, for those of you who may not be aware, is she's still with him, but she doesn't want to look stupid, so she basically is going to say they aren't together. And I feel like, Amara, girl, own your stupidity. People will still listen to your music and come to your concerts, right? Just own your stupidity, girl. We don't care. So MJ starts crying and saying that this is real life for me. You know, he, he can conjure up the tears very well. So Scam Likely, who is his sister, she's sitting like right up on him. No, there's no social distancing going on at all during this reunion. She like right, tight, right up on him. So she's telling him, man, man up. Mind you, she's, <laughs> you know, she really gets on my nerves. She's telling him the man up. And Shay is basically saying that, her brother needs to let Amara go. Like if somebody doesn't want you, you know, let him go. Now I said to myself, huh? Scam likely too must have a new scam that seems to be going in her favor. Okay. Because her wig was nice on the season finale. You know, when they were in, when they were at, uh, Trina and Trick's release party, her, her wig was looking nice and she didn't look as terrible as she usually does on the reunions. So she done, she moving on up. So anyway, Scam J tells his sister basically to hush. She telling her like, hush, because this is real life for me. You know, he is such a great actor. Anyway, so he says that he's going to be there for Amara no matter what. And he is holding it down. Amara says that people don't realize that I've been supporting MJ too. Yeah, girl, we know. We, we know. We, we're not listening to Shay because Shay's basically making it seem like it's one-sided that um, Scam J is supporting Amara. He, if anybody who thinks that anything Shay says is logical is crazy. He living in Amara's house with no job, no source of income. Like nobody believes that MJ is only supporting you. No, he's doing his job to keep a roof over his head. Anyway, so Bobby Lights, he chimes in and he has words with Prima Donna. Uh, <laughs> First of all, Lord, Bobby Lights and these gloves, honey. I can't. So Bobby Lights and, and Prima Donna are kind of going at it. Now, Trick is sitting in the middle of these two, and he, he, just look, he just looks so unbothered. Now, I wish they would cut it out. I was saying to myself, y'all don't see Trick sitting here? Y'all going to upset my uncle and flare up his lupus? I, I said, you know, he can't be around any of this nonsense and foolishness. I wish he would have raised his hand and asked for a seat change. That's what I would have did. Prima Donna does not need to return to the show any longer. I, I, I don't, I don't, first of all, you, you on the couch, not even on the main couch. And Amara at this point is like, this is, this is our segment, right? Like Prima Donna is making no sense. 
whatsoever. She says that she's aggressive by nature. Claudia kind of moved on to the segment where um, Prima Donna was getting into it with Amara at Trina, Trick and Trina's release party. <laughs> so, so they arguing. And see, I just said that Trick don't need to be around this. What does Trick do? Trick gets up and walks off. He didn't even say anything. Just smooth walk off. That's right, Uncle Trick. You don't need this stress. Walk off. Prima Donna makes no sense, just like Shay. Um, so don't bring her back at, at all. At like at all, don't bring her back. Just mind your business. I I don't understand what this whole Amara situation has to do with anything. Julian is there. Julian clarified that him and Amara didn't sleep together. Prima Donna's throwing out allegations. Girl, just 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 sit down. Why is she doing this? Ugh. So Scam J is tired of the yelling back and forth between Prima Donna and, and Amara. So he gets up and he walks off and he goes backstage. And he's just basically saying that he's been in messed up management situations before. So he just wants to be there for Amara. And he loves her. He never messed with JoJo. JoJo, she comes back with her velvet honey um, outfit on, dress on, and she says that she and Scam J never messed around. I don't think anybody really cared, but I guess they felt the need to, to clarify. So, so far, this is a circus, and I'm here for it. I'm totally here for it. So, we move on to Prima Donna's story, I guess. First of all, why? Why? Uh, she's basically given the same spiel about being from the bottom, blah, blah, blah. Look, she may have left the bottom, but the bottom of the barrel mentality is still present. It's like, okay, girl, okay. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, royal family. Did this girl, Claudia asked her if she's thinking about coming, going back to Miami. Did this girl say that she is bi-coastal? Did she say that she is bi-coastal? She's from Miami. She done went up to Atlanta. Then she came back down to Miami. By, by, by coastal? <laughs> did, did she mention LA? Like, correct me if I'm wrong, because if she didn't mention anything about being on a different coast other than the East, it's not by coastal, sis. Look, I'm not even on the set of this reunion and I feel like walking off right now. I, I can't, I just can't. <laughs> so Kendall is backstage with a question from one of the fans, okay? So the question goes, what does it, this is for Prima Donna, what does it mean to be a rehabilitated criminal? So of course she couldn't answer. She said, "I, you know, if, what did she say? If I tell her, basically she's not gonna tell on herself. Girl, you could define being a rehabilitated criminal without incriminating yourself. But she got defensive or whatever and got gutter. But Kendall said, you look cute though, girl. And that's all That's that's all a hood rat needs to hear. He said they look cute. <laughs> no, they do not have these love and hip hop cast members doing these commercials for the Coco. I'm done. <laughs> so there's a PSA in the middle of this reunion and Kendall is uh, backstage registering some of the audience members to vote. Trick Daddy is giving a speech and he was asked, had, did he regain his eligibility to vote being that he was a, well, is a felon, considered a felon. And he says, yeah, man, I can't wait to vote. But I think it is um, a little irresponsible. Here I go, here I go. Because in the state of Florida, some felons, are not able to regain their right to vote. So the okie doke was pulled, uh, I think it was last year, when they were saying that, oh yes, all of these, these, these felons are gonna get their rights back to vote. But if you do your research, you guys can do this independently. You will see why, you will see that there's actually a loophole, okay, that involves money. I'll leave it there, let's move along. So we move on to Trina's story. The saga continues. So Julian, he is given his same old, same old testimony saying that he spent the budget money on Trina's album and Joy from across the room, who looks nice, by the way, in her ensemble. She did look nice. 
says that he sounds like he lying already. So, uh, you know, that's Trina's cousin. So she has first hand information. So she knows Julian is out here telling lies to the people. Trina, she basically told the same story about Julian um, getting a side deal. And Trina says that she's getting emails about her owing Amara money because Julian signed Amara to Trina's label and she knew nothing about it. How, how does this happen? You know, I, look, no shade, Auntie, cut, big cousin Trina, but how do you not know what's going on with your label? Like, come on now. Trina has been in the game far too long. Like, this is your name and your reputation. Like, even if you hire people to handle things like this, it doesn't mean that you put your business and your life in their hands. Stop giving people the benefit of the doubt, especially when it comes to your name. Now, look, you're being sued now left and right. Julie, is Julian being sued? I, like, not, I just... <sighs> Trina Rockstar Music Group or whatever it is. That's your life. That's your bread and butter. You built that from the ground up. I don't care if you knew Julian from the time you both were in Pampers. It's your name. So if anything hits the fan, they're coming after you, not Julian. Uh, nothing should have been able to be approved without it crossing Trina's desk. I'm just saying. Lesson learned. I, I hope she learned her lesson, though. I, I do. You could tell that she was genuinely hurt by the fact that Julian didn't reach out to her uh, when her mother was ill. He did apologize. You know, he said that he regrets not reaching out to her when her mother was ill. Damn that. And what I mean by that is if you are supposed to be someone that's close to me that I look at like a brother or a sister and... You don't reach out to me when you know that me and my loved one, mother, father, brothers, whatever, are close, and you don't reach out to me. You can apologize. That's fine. But I will cut you smooth off. No grudges. It would be no, I wouldn't be holding any grudges. I would move on point blank, period. You, there's no second chance after that. There isn't. I mean, unless you were in a coma, what would be the reason? He says that things were already testy between them at that time. No, you was out here scamming, skimming and scamming. That's why you, and you took advantage of her in her most vulnerable moment. So this was intentional. And now you're getting the heat, Julian. So I don't feel sorry for Julian at all. Now backstage, Uncle Trick is upset. And he's saying that Julian is a straight up fraud. So he comes out and he addresses Julian and he telling him like, look, stop acting, stop acting like you don't know what's going on. You know, I felt where Trick was coming from. Cause it's like, look, let's cut all this crap. You know what it is. Then Trick reveals that Julian was selling Trick's records and his songs overseas. I said, Lord have mercy. Julian said, and did you not get paid for those songs? <laughs> I'm like, what? It was at that point that I said, Julian, you in danger, girl. <laughs> Julian was sitting there appropriately in red. <laughs> And he had, he really had nothing to say. So Trick, he ends up threatening Julian. Then he sits down and he calms down. Then out of nowhere, here comes Prima Donna. Like, girl, will you get your corny? Oh my God. Where'd she come from? She is really fighting for camera time. This is not how someone who runs a quote unquote empire behaves. Go sit down. Talking about, oh, let me go back backstage. My pink curls and my Chanel slides. Good. Ugh. Mona, don't bring her back. Anyway, so Trick, he calms down. He says, you know what? Let me calm down and let me stop doing that, that cussing. Right, Trick, you got to watch your pressure. So Trick calms down. He makes a good point. He says, if Julian is such a good person, right, why doesn't he have anyone here taking up for him or speaking on his behalf? I, I, I can't disagree with you, Trick. Can't disagree with you. Claudia is like, anyone want to say anything nice about Julian Amara? I'm like, any takers? Anybody? <laughs> Crickets. So Julian has basically been exposed. And he was just sitting there rubbing his head. And yes, you should be called out. I don't care if Trina wasn't going through, uh, you know, her mother's illness or not. You taking advantage of somebody, you definitely deserve to be exposed. Julian, you will never work in this town again, honey. Never. Hmm. <laughs> We move on to the uh, fake prima donna and Jocelyn storyline. So let's take attendance really quickly. Prima donna, present. Jocelyn, 
Jocelyn Hernandez seems to be a no call, no show. So you know what's interesting in this part? Uh, Prima Donna, she's describing Jocelyn, right? So she's giving her spiel or whatever, but it seems like they both have the same characteristics. So when Prima Donna is talking about Jocelyn, certain things, it's the same thing that Prima Donna has done, is doing, especially on this reunion. Then Prima Donna goes into making accusations, like comparing her, Prima Donna says that she's a better mother than Jocelyn. She's feeds her kids, yada, yada, yada. And then Prima Donna makes accusations about Jocelyn's recreational activities. That's heavy. Um, and then, of course, Prima Donna, she started yelling and giving some sort of state of the hood rat address speech. Blah, blah, blah. Moving along. So it's Ratchet Ranger time. Ah, my favorite group of gals. So Santana's incident is, recent incident is brought up. Now, I didn't think they were going to bring this up, but here we go. So Santana explains exactly what happened uh, the night that he was at a strip club in Miami. And Tip gave her perspective of what she saw. So Santana explained what happened and gave his two cents, uh, well, his experience. And then Tip, she gave her perspective. So Santana and Miami Tip, they kind of started arguing. So Suki is trying to be the peacemaker, but not necessarily getting in the middle. She said that, you know, them two have to kind of hash it out and talk it out. So it was at this point that I noticed how shiny the girl's legs were. Like, did you see the ladies that had the slits? Like their legs were mad. <laughs> it was like bling blow. And I was like, yes, come on, Vaseline and baby oil. Ashy who? Ashy where? Period. Okay. Um, I also noticed that Bobby's outfit, Bobby Light's pink outfit was the same color and I think the same material as the couches that the cast members were sitting on. Did y'all catch that? It was just like the colors were driving me nuts. I understand this is supposed to be Miami tropical. Oh my God. But the high, the pigmented eyeshadows and the, and the, and the colors and the, and the, and the fur and the boas and the, and the, I, I, it was a lot. It was just in the sparkles. It was just a lot. So Uncle Trick, he ends up chiming in while Miami Tip and Santana were kind of going at it. And he says that, look, you can either not give a bleep or you can acknowledge and apologize when someone expresses that, you know, they are hurt. And I said, has Trick been going to counseling? For him. We love Uncle Trick, don't we? But it's true. It's, it's so true. Like when someone expresses to you, like, look, you hurt me, you've... The person is either not going to give a damn or they're, they can acknowledge it and they can apologize either or, you know, fighting about it is, is kind of pointless, but you know, it is what it is. So then Miami tip, she ends up apologizing. And then Claudia, Claudia did a good, I, Claudia's doing a really good job thus far. I, I really am okay with her. You know, she's asking the right questions. She's very articulate. She's staying on topic. She is keeping control of the cast, I have to say. She's keeping it tight, keeping it right as far as moving on to the different storylines. It's not like a, a mess. Of course, we're getting the drama, but she definitely is keeping everything in order. So she brings up, you know, LGBTQ um, uh, topics, I guess. What, what's the right word to say? You know, so she handled that, I think, very well, very mature and classy. We're not, I'm not used to this side of Claudia, but she's doing a good job so far. So we move on to see uh, Nikki Natural is actually getting a segment. Um, okay. So Trina's boot camp. Uh, you got to love Trina's attempt at having a boot camp because this is where I deem the ladies Suki, Chameleon, and Hood Brat. The Ratchet Rangers. So this is when the Ratchet Rangers were born. Good times, man. Good times. Trick said that he tried to pe play Captain save a -Hole as it pertains to this Nikki Natural girl. So Trick said that he's never seen this side of Trina as far as how ticked off she got and how upset that she was. And Trina quickly replied saying, 
You can't see with your bleep in her mouth. <laughs> Woo! Lord, Trina is pissed, okay? That Nikki natural girl touched a nerve with Trina. And I wonder if there's more to the story that we don't know about. Child, just like Julian, she too will never work in this town again. And that's Nikki Natural I'm referring to. So Trina, she begins to just, just roast Nikki Natural down. Nobody heard of your music. You ain't never going to disrespect me. You whack. You corny. Yada, yada, yada. And then um, Trina raises up. So security is trying to hold Trina back. And they're like, look, don't touch me. Y'all better get them. Get her dusty behind off of this stage. Now, mind you, she wasn't even on the main stage, uh, Nikki Natural. She was on the audience couch. So they usher her off backstage. And I just wonder why does this girl get under Trina's skin so much? I mean, I understand she called her out of her name. And Trina was upset. And the Ratchet Rangers formed. And they basically you know, got at Nikki Natural. And even in the audience, they were ready to go. You know, um, Bobby Lights was going in. Uh, Suki was going in. So they were, they were ready. And Trina gets up and she's trying to go backstage and they're trying to stop her. And she's trying to get to where Nikki Natural is. She's trying to go backstage to get at Nikki. And I'm just like, okay, Trina, cousin, ma'am, She's a kid. Like, leave that child alone. I feel like, Trina, you made your point. You don't need to catch a case. Um, Yeah, but Trina was not playing. So that's pretty much where the episode ends. It's going to pick back up next week, so we shall see. So I'll see you guys next week for part two of Love and Hip Hop Miami Season 3, The Reunion Part 2. Until next time, Royal Family, peace.